today at the new indian we have with us lieutenant general devendra pratap pandey who is commanding one of the most significant corps of indian army that is srinagar base chinar corps in other words he is in charge of the entire kashmir valley for the indian army in his previous stints he has served as a commander of a sector of rashtriya rifles in lola valley and has also served as goc of the kilo force in northern valley well welcome to reason one of the most important platforms of the new indian where we get to the reason behind the issues that concern you welcome jin pandey thank you arti thank you well let me begin this conversation with a very simple question in your stint in kashmir in the last one year do you think kashmir has returned to normalcy can we say that on the insurgency front and cross border terrorism front kashmir is now looking a bit normal well so anybody says that uh, kashmir has started to be normal is possibly not understanding the the layers in which kashmir operates and i think uh, while the process has been set in motion for normalization of the situation here and bringing the security situation uh, under control in past few years the trend has been going towards the positive side but yet to say that it's become normal or is reaching normalcy pretty soon is possibly a big question mark and uh, therefore we have to uh you know cut this answer into multiple layers firstly let's uh, come into the security situation parameters the visible parameters are on observation that means the number of pii's pcas that cross cities committed by terrorist are in reduction mode the infiltration from across the lc have been possible at least in uh, last few years the number of terrorist who been utilized in last about year plus have been the highest in numbers while the numbers which have been recruited to the terrorist ranks have also been the least when you look at the parameters of stone pelting protest which are terrorist related protest have totally declined there are very few instances which are symbolic in nature in which uh, people may have come out in few numbers once in a uh, couple of times i think in my entire tenure they have been only just a a show of uh, an attempt or something of the sort but otherwise they had no will to come on to the street and do any type of stone pelting the second layer which you can see is the aspect of uh, business tourism and such like things which are flourishing in the manner which you see now in fact recently just about a couple of weeks back we had about 100 flights landing and emitting from shinola which is a record of sorts thousands of people you want to book a room in uh, any hotel you have to really use all links connections to possibly get a book uh, a room which will be costing about 3 to 4 times of the normal uh, standard rate the streets are full of tourist in fact when i had to go and see the tulip garden virtually there's a whole the the roads were blocked leading to tulip garden for uh, by the tourist and the domestic tourist who want to visit and see when you look at all these aspects of uh, business transaction which is happening the markets are flourishing people are uh, they are open through and through all days the markets are uh, out and open people are shopping these are great indicators of uh, situation turning towards normal normalcy not yet the third is the investment development process which is taking place i'm sure you're watching the kind of road network coming up infrastructure which is the update. the investment we are coming out from uh, this i'm told the dubai based firms are coming and investing in this uh, in kashmir so i think they know something much more than us uh, <laughs> that something is coming out to be positive in uh, kashmir and therefore people from outside are floundering running coming up and crowding the space for investing in uh, the future of kashmir so these three parameters are indicative of process of normalcy coming about there is an attempt to keep certain degree of radicalization in different form of that which is ongoing uh 
We saw General Pandey reaching out to people during his stint in Kashmir in the last one year or so. You were uh, holding seminars, you were conducting conferences, you were reaching out to civilians, you were asking them to contribute positively to society. What was the motivation behind that and has it really helped? Well, the answer of has it really helped has to come from you. Right? Because if I say something, it will be seen as what I'm trying to say is self aggrandism But yes, when I took over, I brought to bear, brought uh, about my, this was my seventh stint in Valley. And I have served the length and breadth of uh, Kashmir Valley with two tenures on the line of control, two in North Kashmir, two in Central, in South Kashmir, all during very uh, challenging times, difficult times. And one thing I was very sure in my interaction with the people of Kashmir that they are very, very good. The only challenge which is happening is possibly by nature, Kashmiris are very emotional and they could be driven by an absence of reach out through a negative propaganda. Narratives can be, you know, swing them onto one side or other. And they are very uh, prone to, you know, being led by strong narratives. So when I was given this charge to come here, and uh, I just thought that possibly as my mission is also to have enabled the civil government, civil administration to sustain a stable peace, a sustainable peace in Kashmir, it is imperative that I also reach out to them. And the current environment of uh, social media uh, onslaught, the smartphone available to every child, every youth, every elderly woman, all ages, it is also very important to reach out and uh, inform the public about what we are there for, eventually we are there for themselves. And therefore contest a narrative of mind space, which had been ongoing for some time, possibly uncontested in this space. So while on one side there is a narrative always coming about that Indian Army is a brutal force, we are dominating, we are occupiers and such like things, but it was a one-sided, very limited but it was flooding the social media space and the imagination of the people. There is nobody informing them what they knew already and clarifying it to them. So possibly just reach out, which as a uh, citizen soldier connect started from company commander and upwards was an important facet which we dealt in. And I think uh, today people are much more wiser and much more aware that there are vulture journalists, vulture social media workers sitting across in greater confines of their plush homes in uh, foreign countries who may be from Kashmiri diaspora and they may be well paid by and they may be their family business to you know incite people here and bring disrepute to our country and to our army in the eyes of the world organization and definitely in the eyes of Kashmir. It is required to be contested. So I think this reach out has ensured, enabled us to actually bring a fight onto the platform. Every fight today is not of bullets and weapons, but is also in the uh, in the domain of uh, social media and uh, the digital space as well. In the last one year, we actually saw Indian flag getting hoisted in Lal Chow, which was a no-zone area once upon a time, in fact, for a very long time. How did you manage that? No, there's a question which uh, those people who have done it have to uh, answer. I think uh, when I look at it as an outsider, all these events unfolding, as I said that uh, the Kashmiris are as nationalist as Indians, as anywhere in the other part of the country. The only challenge is the times it is questioned because of a very few percentage of people who reflect the disease in, uh, in the national and the international uh, uh, arena. They speak, they talk. They discuss issues of anti-Indian uh, nature, but are they the true representative of Kashmiris? I don't think so. And I knew in their heart. So there was an example, I just want to give a quick one, that when I was a Josi Kilo Force in Sharifabad, and we decided in spite of all this protest and hartal calls and band calls, that on 15th August in 2018, we'll unfurl flags in all our schools in AGSS, which were under our control. By the way, once we pass this, instructions or pass the possibilities. There were villagers in various other locations who came forward and said 
that for last 25 years or 28 years, there has been no flag unfurled in my village, in the school which was here. Can you help us out? Now, this is not, we have told them. We are only going to the army, go to schools. And mind you, this information has, is coming to a general officer from young company commander. That's why there is a requirement. And therefore, there is a flurry of activity to find national flags. We brought in national flags. They were unfurled in virtually 95% of my COBs, in proximity of COBs with people coming in and attending in numbers, which was quite interesting. So I'm talking of 2018. Now I have brought that experience here when it came about. And when the instructions were passed by the civil administration that flags will be unfurled, there is a rush for taking on the flag and flying. People are extremely, there will be a number. There will be a number which are radical. We may not be able to change their mind. But by and large, about 90% of our Kashmiri uh, citizens here are very, very proud of our national flag. And I'll just add one more thing. You know, there are two very, there's a very uh, interesting place called Palama mm. in uh, Kunmu area. There's a group of uh, about 25, 30 women who decided to start making national flags. And once that started becoming, this entire project reached out to North Kashmir in a place called Konan uh, Poshpura. Oh, yes. And, you know, there's a whole campaign to malign Indian Army about this whole rape issue in Konan Poshpura, you know, gang rape stuff, which was so many people or governmental organizations, civil organizations have said, negated it. But yet it was on point. And they, the woman there started making the national flag. And when I went there myself, very recently, just about a month back, those women were very proud of making it. They made, they were, they came out saying that we have made 14,000 flags. Wow. And uh, they have presented me a national flag, a general whom they did not even know. Uh, they have not asked me anything to be given to them. For 30 years or even more, the Western press projected Kunan Poshpora and many other areas and many other people of Kashmir as victims of state terror. In fact, the Indian Army's image was being projected as you yourself said, a brutal force and occupier in Kashmir. So tell me one that why weren't we able to counter that narrative? I can't one can't blame everybody on this. First point is that look negative news sets. And uh, there is if there's no contest on that negative news in the sense that it is planted, it's flawed, it is a fake news. And if you don't contest it, then possibly it will always be uh, put out in the media and they will be quoted in various uh, uh, books and journal, uh, journalist the art articles and all just the uh, media articles and all. But what has changed is that in last about when they saw this whole surge after 2016, peaking out to about 2018 and thereafter came 2019, a very landmark year, I think people have found voice. The people who were scared and when as a young officer or as a middle ranking officer when I used to ask them, if you know this is the truth, why don't you speak out? The line used to be that you have got gun, but you have to follow the rule of law. The others who are compelling us to talk something else have also got guns, but they will fire on the instructions of somebody else from across. Or, uh, in the last three years has been a transformational change. People have found their voice and they now when they come out, they come out to speak against even terrorist attacks. And that is what is changing now. So when somebody goes out, a very interesting case of Hadarpura. In fact, in spite of the knowledge, then so many people turned around the security forces using that example of killings and you know restricting people and such like things. But was there a popular surge on that uh, event? No, it was not there. It was in the some domain. It was there, and they thought they'll put us onto back foot. But people played on. People fought on our side. Right. Nothing, nobody came onto the streets. In social media, people contested the so-called people who were, you know, talking about these uh, events. Another thing which has happened is that our soldiers also now have started talking about it. I'll give you an example. Three operations have taken place this year. Two in the mosque, one in Madrasa. Our men, without being told, 
have held fire, have minimized fire to ensure that the terrorists were neutralized with minimal damage. Without having been asked, they have gone inside, cleaned up that entire area and handed over formally to the local population, which has been appreciated in the areas of Shopia and Pulwama, which you know today in last about few years have been heart and soul of terrorism and terrorist numbers. So if this has happened and this coming out in public image, you know, people are, so there is a lady uh, who sitting across somewhere in Germany flashed one uh, Quran, uh, which was splattered by blood, you know, and yeah. said that Indian army conducted an operation in Masjid today and this is what they have done to Quran. Trust me, within no time, she got trolled by the Kashmiri Muslims. That mm. is a fake news. Somebody took it out that this is of the Syria. This entire book was uh, yes. shown I about a few it. years back. If you recall, it happened yes, somewhere about yeah. uh, nine, ten months back. So now when somebody puts out a fake news on uh, social media or on channel, there are enough number of Kashmiris who contest it. We don't have to contest it. We only have to follow the rule of law. And that is what changed. The change has happened because in last three years, people have found their voice to contest. They know that if they speak out, they will be supported by their own kitten. Okay. So this is the transition which is taking place. Has radicalization increased or has it been contained? What is the status of radicalization? There are some people who are radicalized. For far too long here in Kashmir, entire system was reaching out to the people who were anti-Indians to provide them security, to provide them funds, to provide them, enable them to remain quiet at times. And they were, you know, the I think the civil administration here, the state government was being virtually blackmailed by these uh, people, you know. Now the change has happened is that no more such blackmail takes place. The people who are following the rule of law, who are living in their, doing their job correctly the way they are supposed to be, are the ones who are being empowered. And the ones who are stated to be radical or anti-national uh, or whichever ideology they may belong, they are the ones who are now being sidelined. The thing is that slowly, not only the civil administration is sidelining them, it is the people who are also sidelined them. The latest case was when uh, this SPO in Bagdam got killed, yes. you know, you imagine there was a time when a terrorist got killed, there used to be a huge upsurge of Janaza which would take place. Yeah. Now it is transitioned that then SPO died and his brother died, they fought valiant, valiantly. The number of people who turned out for uh, his Janaza or to you know, showcase his support to the family was in thousands. But the unfortunate part is that yet the media has not given adequate coverage to it. This radicalization aspect, this last couple of a hundred year story of investing into radical element, it may be for separatism, it may be now for religion, because when people realize that this Azadi story is not going to work, separatism is not going to work, then the system which is anti-India, anti kashmir invested into religion. Yeah. I know a Kashmiri can swing this way or that way depending upon how much pressure is brought to bear on him yeah. from outside agencies. Has Pakistan changed its strategy or approach towards cross-border terrorism in Kashmir? They show a positive hand, the people across, and we start believing now things will be fine. And they have always come back and stand. I will always err on the side of caution. The strategic orientation and the mindset of the establishment which controls the levers of what is happening within their own country and outside elsewhere, maybe in Afghanistan or maybe here, has not changed. It is a compulsion, the geopolitical, geo-economic compulsion has ensured that the current ceasefire understanding was sought and given. There are tragedies happening in terms of inter-economy. There are other uh, situations which are unfolding in the country. Those are compulsions. Has their mental strategic orientation changed? Once there are no compulsions internal and external, and then the behavior changes, then I may, I, I may start believing that they have changed color. It is long way off.
Yes, what has happened is that this ceasefire understanding has allowed people of border areas to live a great life on either side. While as a soldier it may seem that it may not be to my liking, but as a citizen of a country, I find it very, very invigorating that I see people of the border areas going through the humdrum of their daily activities as normal as any part of our country. What happened is that when I came, I took on a concept or a strategy of breaking the cycle of violence. And we, among the security forces, we decided that we'll go after the terrorists in a big way. We'll neutralize them, firstly by killing, if required, but we'll also reach out for surrenders and apprehensions through the family members and different manner. Mm -hmm. So if you see in last about five or so many years, in fact, last couple of decades, mm -hmm. the number of apprehensions of terrorists has jumped. Last year is about 80 plus, we, this year we have already crossed about 25. Majority of these apprehensions are reached out by the family members who know that there is an enabling environment to take these kids out who have picked up the weapon and they have not yet shot somebody. Mm -hmm. And they are not going to be culprits or you know taken yeah. out. So they have been taken out and this change has happened. So on one side we are neutralizing the terrorists, on second side we are trying to reach out and provide an environment that the youth which is uh, a target, which is susceptible, vulnerable, should not become a terrorist. Now the situation has turned that a parent is coming to us that my son is likely to go on the wrong path, please save him. So that's a major change. So the second arm of breaking the cycle of violence, we have really invested well and I feel extremely proud of myself uh, at the top uh, of the leadership here that we have saved more number of people than we have killed. And when the people start believing on the civil government and the establishment this aspect, I think we'll be much, much more closer to get the normalcy which you have. What is the status of infiltration along LOC and IED? And also, what you are saying is indicating that the recruitment has come down. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. You see, last year the recruitment from uh, last last year there were about 170 plus Last year we had about 140, 145. Till now we have just got about 25 to 20, 25 plus. This thing. So when you extrapolate it, it's going to be about 75. Mm. Today the terrorist ranks. When I took over, in fact, one of the journalists, couple of journalists asked me in a very sly manner that uh, General Saab, every year the statements are made, 250, 300 terrorists are there and we are working very hard to bring it down. What will happen in your tenure? And that day I promised him and the IGP, DGP were all present there, that we will bring that number down to 200, if possible 150. And today the numbers are sub 150. We have achieved that number. But that number has happened, not only because of synergistic effort of all the security forces, but because of the enabling environment the civil government has provided. And more importantly, the people have participated in this whole thing. Maximum operations this year have been conducted on this year and last year were on human intelligence. Where the terrorists have transited to, they have gone to different level of technology. So what's happening is that people are giving us information. It is, what is the indicator of it? It indicates that they're not happy to have a terrorist in their backyard. What about infiltration? Infiltration has come down to the all-time low. This year, there was only one attempt. A credible attempt hmm. happened was in the first week where we neutralized, we killed one. And uh, there were only a second chapter to see who was way off. This year, numbers are there, the attempts are half-hearted. And I think it is because of the strategy which you have changed of LC domination, you've gone to a different tactic. Mm. And also, I think there is hardly any leadership here. If you know, the entire leadership of Jash and Lashkar and HM have been neutralized multiple times over. There is nobody except for one old man who is somewhere in South Kashmir just trying to hide uh, uh, somewhere. There is not even one terrorist which is vintage of 2018 and beyond. So there is no leadership here to control. They don't know where to send. We got transcripts saying that we got somebody to be sent across but there is nobody else to manage it. But then they were successful at targeting some minority members in the last one year. Yeah, okay. I will not restitute minority member. You know, it's very easy to say non-local minority. Uh, they will carry out an act of terror against anybody as long as they can carry on it. They are deliberate. 
they are also not a standard throughout the year norm it will happen when something very important is going to happen yeah. right they have transited from ak47 to pistols so a concept of hybrid terrorists has come about in which a young youth maybe a college going uh working in his orchard a person who's working as a uh, some sort of a employee in some a restaurant or a location will get a weapon in his hand he may not be actually radicalized also it may be for drugs it may be for uh, payment and he is just given a task to carry out a hit and this gentleman goes out a hit he is not on the radar of the police because of the very nature the way he is living he is not come out to overtly as a radical element or somebody who is supporting the cause of separatism or uh, radicalization and therefore he is lying below the radar and uh, this is how they are carrying out so there is not an overt terrorist activities happening yeah. now when you look at the numbers the numbers have remained same for last 4 5 years we talked about hybrid terrorism what is that so i explain that hybrid terrorist is a gentleman a youth who is not on the listed categorized uh, this thing is not declared openly to be a terrorist fighting for a particular cause so what would be the percentage of of that Yeah, uh, I think that number when we started last year was uh, beyond about hundred, which we had carried out analysis. That we did not know these names. That numbers have also come down very significantly now. Is it uh, because the army and the police are proactive, or is it because they are changing tactics? No, they had changed the tactics to become an hybrid terrorist. Mm. Mm. We also had to follow through and change the tactics to reach out and identify these people to act. And I. uh the police has been able to start it firstly the moment the kill happens a uh, a uh, uh, act of terror happens the people tell us that so and so has done after all there's no way to reach out to but the good part is now we are a curve ahead and the police is getting information not only from the various other uh, system but also from the family members of possibility of a guy to be hybrid terrorist we have also been reading a term called white collar terrorism what is that yeah, you see when i came here uh, and uh, while number of people are contesting this uh, uh, the term that it is not correct to use this term because then you are narrowing down uh, the bandwidth of people who are anti national or uh, you know mm. working for a radical cause or who are working for separatist networks or pakistan networks but in to expose a certain set of people in the eyes of kashmiri people mm-hmm. that there are people who are living amongst you who are the high and mighty of the society who are actually preying upon your youth i thought prudent to call this white collar terrorist because these are people who are much more dangerous than a civil terrorist and i term them as factory of terrorists because you may kill five he will produce another five because he is sitting in a place of importance he may be in the government service he may be a contractor he may be a great business leader he may be sitting across in new york and germany stepping away some uh, uh, great shape in the mind of uh, the youth and he has got a respectability in the society people know that this is a man who is leading on my child to the path of terror for me this high end respectable people are more dangerous Today it is no more uh, great uh, honor to be a separatist. We need to find that man who is sitting as a teacher in a school, but he is brainwashing the people to become. So you know, you remove the teacher, our youth will have a flourishing life for mm-hmm. ever. So this is what the society started understanding. This is what the civil Adam has been started understanding, and that is why you find the civil Adam reaching out and. Uh, Uh, suspending or removing people from the service but they are not finding uh, recruits from age bracket of 21 and beyond oh. they are now investing in trying to reach out to children yeah. of 14 15 years they are much more vulnerable look at the statistics in last about a year and a half the guys who are with the criminal weapon are just about 16 17 years who doesn't have a world view of his own very vulnerable last question you have served in kashmir for a very long time in different states and you see the length and breadth of the valley what is that one major difference 
that has brought this moment in your life, in your career, where you're saying that there is a change and it is a positive change? I will, of course, love to back that even to August 2019. But there is much more that has happened since then. There is a high degree of uh, empowerment which is going down to the roots through the system of the PRI which is happening. People are seeing that money which is coming is being invested and converted to the ground to the That system of transparency in terms of, okay, I don't want to give this credit. Somebody will say, okay, you're talking positively of the civil administration. But what people tell me is that transparency in terms of job appointments, contracts and such which is happening is a new now and that is what which I heard all the time that either you belong to this party or that party or in between to uh, a certain segment of religious organization and therefore you will be able to get your job done if required. Today it is not the case and more importantly the people have found voice, they have understood that they have been played all along on an ambiguous nature. Akhir Kaptak was not known. You imagine a civil was killed, everybody kept shut. Even if 500 people have got the courage to come out and speak against the killing, it is a phenomenal change in Kashmir. Not one day of Bandh has been observed this year. It has compelled the government servants to work every day. Well, this has been a very insightful conversation. I'm so glad that you gave me the opportunity to speak to you today. We will come back with another episode of Reason quite soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.